Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm finally tackling the declutter of the century. <laughs> I'm gonna be decluttering my entire makeup collection with the exception of my eyeshadow palettes because I did just do a big declutter on those. If you missed that, I will throw that up in the cards. So we're gonna go step by step and just go through my entire makeup collection. I've got some makeup over here. Most of my makeup is in these acrylic drawers and then this Alex 5 drawer down here. The, I think the most time is going to be spent on lipsticks. So we're going to save all the lipsticks for last. I'm just going to have to like dump them all out on the floor and go through them one by one. So that being said, this is going to be a long video. <laughs> get yourself a snack, get comfortable, put this on in the background when you're doing laundry or something because it's going to be a while. Before we jump into the big declutter, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like these declutter videos. And if you haven't and you'd like to, I hope you would consider subscribing and hit that little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video every single Monday through Friday. So I think we're gonna go ahead and start with the drawers down here. And the first drawer right here is my foundation drawer. I'll probably have to keep playing around with the angles and lighting because I'm not sure how this is gonna work, but this is what we're gonna use for now. First off, I have two of the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. I'm still a bit on the fence with these. They're great for short-term wear, like less than five hours. But anything longer than that, it starts to break down. I think I'm gonna get rid of the shade Buff Bisque because I'm pretty sure Bronze Beige has my undertones a little bit better. So if anything, I would use that one and not this one. So I'm gonna declutter Buff Bisque and hold on to Bronze Beige. I ended up buying another shade of the Too Faced Born This Way foundation because I really wanted to give it another shot because the shade that I had before was just horrific. I have the shade Porcelain now and I have not been reaching for it that much. Like I love, 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 holy grail, the matte foundation from Too Faced, so I really wanted to give their other foundations a try. I'm gonna hold on to this because I haven't given it a full fair try yet, so I'm gonna hold on to this one. This is a product that I actually just picked up from MAC. This is the Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation. I really went to MAC just to get like recolor match so I could have an accurate color match in my description box, so I did get matched to NC25. And I do like this foundation. It's a nice, like, medium coverage, kind of light foundation, and I do enjoy it. Next up, I do have the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 foundation in the shade 03 Light Beige. I did have issues, like, finding a shade match for this, but at the end of the day, it's actually a decent formula. I'm just trying to think about actually reach for it over some other ones. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm gonna hold on to this one because I do remember enjoying it in my full face of Milani video. Something I know immediately I need to declutter right now is the original ColourPop No Filter Foundation. This, I could not get this to work for the life of me. I have two shades, Light 60 and Light 55. I had to mix them to get a good shade match, but just the formula never looked good on me no matter what I did. So this needs to go. This is actually a foundation I haven't reached for in a long time. Because I remember liking the sample version of this so much better than this full size. And honestly, I should have returned it because I haven't been enjoying it that much. But it's just taking up room in my drawer. So I should just go ahead. I'm going to declutter the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation in the shade Y2... <laughs> oh my god, it am tight. In the shade Y245. Excuse how messy these look, but no matter how many times I clean it, this is just like the messiest packaging. This is the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation. I have two shades, 710 and 725. 725 was once upon a time a perfect shade match for me back when I actually went outside last summer. <laughs> I can't wear this one anymore, so I need to declutter this one. And I'll still hold on to 710. It's a good shade match for me right now, and I still really enjoy this foundation. I think I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one. This is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Tint Foundation. And it just, the undertones on this don't work well with me. I think the undertones are cool for this. And I don't like this as much as I like the Physician's Formula Healthy Foundation. They're both fairly similar, but this one definitely matches me better and wears better. So we're gonna declutter the Neutrogena and hold on to the Physician's Formula. For the life of me, I don't know why I bought this cover enhancer drops because I never use them. <laughs> I've literally like this is just sat in my drawer and I've not used them. Ugh. Honestly, it was a bit of a waste of money. <laughs> 
I'll hold on to them just because this literally is brand new and I need to see if I actually like it. I'll hold on to this and if I don't use it within the next couple of weeks, it's, it's gonna go. Some darkening drops from Catrice that I've actually been using and enjoying. Um, these are the Prime and Fine Makeup Transformer Drops and I've used this to darken a couple of foundations and it looks really nice. So I'm gonna hold on to this one. I'm sorry if you could hear the leaf blowers going. They've been going all morning and Jesus, I couldn't wait all day to film. <laughs> the next foundation I have is the CYO Life Proof Long Lasting Foundation. I actually really enjoy this, though the shade by itself looks just a little off for my skin tone, but I love this formula. It is amazing, and I love mixing this foundation, so I am holding on to this one. This is a BB cream from AOA Studio, which is the Shop Miss A online store. And I have the BB cream in light, I believe it is. Yeah, in light. And I'm on the fence about this because this looks amazing when I first put it on. But by the time like my day is over and I'm taking it off, it I see it breaking down in spots. So I'm going to give this just some more testing, a little bit more time. And if I'm not totally in love with it, I need to let it go. But testing it out some more. Okay, just adjusted the angle right there. Hopefully this is a little bit better to see. The next foundation I have is the CoverGirl Clean Matte BB Cream. I have the shade 530. This oxidizes like hell, and I really don't like that. Like, I like the formula, and it does wear well, but it just oxidizes way too much, and I can't, like, wear it without being embarrassed. So I think I'm going to go ahead and declutter this one. A foundation I haven't come back to in a while but that I remember like really liking is from NARS. This is the Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation and I need to pull this out again. I really did. I did a whole video on this foundation. I remember liking it and I just I feel like it just gets lost in my drawers so I need to pull this back out. I'm gonna hold on to this one. Foundation that can go right into the trash is the Even Steven Foundation from The Balm. I bought this on sale. Really didn't like it. I would not recommend it and it's going away. <laughs> the next foundation that I'm just gonna go ahead and toss because I could not get it to work is the Hourglass Stick Foundation. First of all, it was like pulling teeth trying to get a shade that matched and this definitely doesn't match. I spent like 20 minutes in Sephora trying to get matched and it just didn't work. And then I just actually like wearing it, it felt really stiff, it didn't really blend. I just, uh, and I'm, I just need to let it go, like I can't just keep holding on to it. Next I have two foundations that I actually really like to use mixed together. This is the LA Girl Pro Coverage Foundation and the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. The Matte and Poreless is definitely not my right shade. I struggle a lot with trying to find shades that work but I really do love both of these for mixing and I like having more affordable options around so I'm gonna hold on to both of these. So a BB cream that I actually really like is from Misha. This is the Perfect Cover BB cream. I have the shades 21 and 27. I really like both of these and I have to mix them together to get a shade that works for me, but I do really enjoy them, so I'm gonna hold on to both of these. Two backup foundations that I have still in their boxes are the Estee Lauder Double Wear. I have the shade 1 and 2, and then I have the Ordinary Serum Foundation in 2.0 Neutral. I like both of these, but I do like to mix them more than I like them on their own. So I just, I keep them in their boxes new until I can pick up the foundation that I really like mixing with it the best. I love mixing the Estee Lauder with the Fenty foundation. And I love mixing the Ordinary Serum foundation, a matte peach perfect foundation when it was still too dark. So I do like both of these. They've been sitting in my drawer just for a couple of weeks now as backups, but uh, I'm definitely going to keep these. And last but not least, the expensive foundation heard around the world. This is the Chantecaille Future Skin Oil-Free Gel Foundation in the shade Alabaster. I did pan an entire one of these and bought it again, so I am definitely holding on to this. It's one of my favorite foundations, despite the fact that it's so expensive. And that's one drawer down, so let me go ahead and put all the foundations back in. I definitely like that a lot better. It's more organized, it's more cut down. It's still a lot of foundation, but I love it. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to the next drawer. This one is a hot mess and a half, and I need just to clean it out. I have pressed powders, loose powders, blush, and bronzers. So let's just, let's dig into the bronzers or blushes, Jesus. So this blush I actually got in like one of my last BoxyCharm boxes and as you can see it's like still in the box. I think I swatched it once and never touched it again. So I'm going to declutter this because someone else can actually get use out of that. 
This Physicians Formula Butter Blush is way too light. It's more of a highlighter, and I didn't really like the formula of it. It just, I don't know. I didn't really enjoy it, so that's gonna go as well. I love, love, love my Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso. Definitely holding on to that. This is a blush from Flower Beauty. This is in Peach Primrose, and it's actually a really, really pretty blush. I like the formula, and I like how it looks on my skin, so I'm going to hold on to this. I need to try out more products from Flower Beauty. I haven't really tried a whole lot. I have this mini from Natasha Denona. This is the Blush and Glow, and you get a blush and a highlight. I really like the highlight in here. The blush, not so much, so I'm going to hold on to it, but just move it to like my highlighter section instead. I do have one of the ABH trios. This is in Peach, or what is it called? Peachy Love. I love, love, love all of these shades, especially this really light one right here. Ugh, stunning. So definitely holding on to this one. I have two of the Wet n Wild Color Icon Ombre blushes, and unfortunately, like, both of them are just too light for me, and I can't use them as blushes. At least with um, my Thai Buy You a Drink, I can probably use this as a highlighter. Oh, I hate that I can never open these either. They're so different. Okay, no. I'm just going to declutter both of these because they're kind of a pain in the butt to open and I can't actually use them as a blush. These are two little samples that can definitely go. This is just a sample of the NARS Orgasm blush, which I already have, so I don't need this. And this is just a, uh, like, not a sample, but like a little kit from Ulta, just their brand of the blush and a bronzer. I don't reach for them, so those can go. I actually really like this blush from Pretty Vulgar. It is, what's their shade? This is the Make Them Blush in shade 18 Hush Blush. And it's just like the perfect tone and it looks gorgeous. I got this also in like a boxy charm or something and I really like it. So I'm gonna hold on to this one. So I just found out that my loose blush wasn't actually closed and just made a mess all up in here. <laughs> But I do like this loose blush. This is from Geek Chic Cosmetics and this is the Let Them Eat Cake Neko face blush. It's really pretty. It's very out there, but I do like it for when I'm trying to do a more dramatic look. Uh, and I just love the packaging and everything. So I am going to hold on to this and I do need to clean out this entire thing. I have one of the Patrick Star and MAC collabs. This is the powder blush duo in I'm Not Blushing. So you have kind of like a bronzer and then a blush right up there. I rarely reach for this. But I, I think I feel like I need to give it another shot. So I'm going to hold on to this. But it, it's going to be like on the chopping block if, I'm, if I don't ever reach for it. Next, I have a bunch of these like minis from Benefit. And I already know a couple that I could just get rid of. Ugh, see, this one thing. I need to depot this because I actually really like this one. This is the California blush. But it just doesn't close anymore. So, like, it, I don't know how it broke, but it doesn't close anymore. But this is actually the only one out of the set that I really, really liked. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can depot that. The Gold Rush blush is just a little bit too shimmery for me. So I'm going to pass that one along. The Rockateur blush is pretty, but it, but it looks really similar to, like, the Pretty Vulgar and to the MAC one. So I don't need to have this one, too. So that's going to get decluttered. And the Dandelion blush is just a pink blush. I have other pink blushes. I don't really need this one. Next, I have another blush from Milani. This is in Romantic Rose. It's a really nice blush, but I think I have like a very similar shade in their blush palette that I picked up. So I don't need to have like this gigantic Milani blush, even though it is good. So I'm going to pass this one along and hold on to this one instead. So this is their trio in Floral Fantasy. So it's a very similar shade to this one right in the middle, but you get a lighter like matte one. This one's a little bit more satin and then this one's very glowy and deep. So I'm going to hold on to the palette instead. Okay, and I think the last blush that I have in here is this big palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I did get this at like a TJ Maxx or a Marshalls for like very very cheap but i do like the variety of blushes that you get in here i just wish the packaging was smaller like this is so clunky but i really do like these blushes so if anything i might need this looks like it'd be easy to depot so i'm probably gonna depot this oh that is so much nicer i like having them all in like this one little container with the exception of the two palettes and i'll probably just put those over there once we get to the loose powders Let's go through my pressed powders real quick because I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm gonna keep all of these just because I don't have too many pressed powders. I have the NYX Finishing Powder in Banana. I think at one point I did declutter this, but then I pulled it back out because I was reaching for more of like a banana type powder for under my eyes, but I never reached for it. 
like I, the one banana powder that i really like is a loose powder from beauty bakery but uh if i pulled it out of a declutter pile and then still never reach for it i just need to get rid of it so that can go <laughs> these are all like little mini samples of face powders from geek chic cosmetics unfortunately none of them are like a good shade match for me so i'm not gonna purchase a full size of the powder but it is a nice powder the only thing is that it's hard to shade match online especially with like indie brands like this so I would recommend trying out some samples. You can get samples of these. Like they're like a quarter each if you place an order with them. But just make sure you definitely like try it out before you buy the full size because you don't want to have a full size of loose powder that like doesn't match you. This face powder is a powder from Clinique. This is the Super Powder Double Face Makeup in Matte Beige. So I think it's more of like a powder foundation than anything. It's a bit dark for me, but I do like using this when I have a foundation that's too light for me just to kind of balance it out and bring a little bit more color back to my face. I have the Milani pressed face powder in light tan. I think this is a nice face powder but I have to admit like due to how clunky and chunky it is I don't reach for it as often as I do like my Rimmel or anything else but it is a good face powder. I've used it enough to like wear off most of like the imprint right there and the last powder that I have in here is the Rimmel Stay Matte. This is in the shade 001 Transparent so it is a little bit light for me but I am trying to like test out my depotting process on this one before I jump in and try the shade that I really like which is 004 Sand Beige. Okay two down. Look at all these contours. I need to go through this so bad. Okay so loose powders i think i'm gonna hold on to all of these this is a little sample or point perk of the cover effects uh their loose matte setting powder in light lot i really like this powder i need to pan this one too because i did go through like two other small ones of this it's really nice but i don't know if i would ever spend that kind of money on the full size this is a translucent setting powder from Milani. It's in translucent light to medium number one. I was actually pretty impressed by this powder. I think the only thing is that you're not getting a whole lot of product in here. It's a lot smaller than some of the other like drugstore powders you can get. But it still is really good for, well, I'll say the drugstore. So I'm going to hold on to this one as well. This is a powder that I've fallen in love with for under my eyes. This is the Beauty Bakery Flower Powder, and I have the shade yellow, just like a yellow setting powder. This is the only yellow powder that looks incredible under my eyes. Like, it brightens, but not too much. It just feels comfortable. It works well with so many different concealers. I love this powder, so definitely holding on to this one, and I'll probably rebuy it when it's gone. Next, I have the Rimmel Stay Matte Loose Powder. This I was so excited to find. <laughs> Uh, because I love the pressed powder so much. Um, but I will say I don't reach for it as often as I do some of my other powders. But it's still a good powder from the drugstore. Next I do have my Cody Airspun Loose Powder. I have the shade Naturally Neutral. I will be holding on to that one. And last but not least, I have the Too Faced Peach Perfect Setting Powder. This one has a bit of a pink tint to it. I do really like this. The only thing that I don't like is like the scent and like the taste. Because you can actually taste this powder like because it's so finely milled it just goes up in the air and you can taste it i don't like the taste at all it tastes gross but i do like this powder i really did want to try it out i bought like that um six on the peach kit where it came with this the mascara that i don't really like and then the primer i've really been enjoying the primer and i really like the face powder so i do think that that kit was worth it so here we have a whole bunch of bronzer i do not need this much bronzer okay Let's go through. I really like these two from Wet n Wild. These are the contouring palette duos. I have Dolce de Leche and then I have Caramel Toffee. My ideal palette would be like this brown shade with this light shade right here. So, might depot them. I don't know, but I, I do like these. So I'm gonna hold on to those. A bronzer I am definitely holding on to is my Milani Baked Bronzer in Dolce Number no. 9. I love this bronzer. I feel like it's totally underrated. Not a lot of people talk about Milani bronzers, but I really do like this one. So holding on to that. This little mini of the Hula Light is like almost my actual skin tone. Just like a little bit darker. I, I can't really use it as a face powder and I can't really use it as a bronzer. So that one has to go. I'm not actually a huge fan of this e.l.f. bronzer. I feel like it's, I don't know. I go back and forth on it. And, and I just have other bronzers that I know I like better, even affordable ones, so I, this one's going to get decluttered. 
This is a Clinique Chubby in the Nude Foundation Stick that I was using as like a cream bronzer, but I never use cream bronzer. I got this as like a sample whenever I bought the Clinique Moisturizer, and I'm just not using it, so that needs to go. I have the Take Home the Bronze from The Balm. This is actually a really good bronzer that I like. I just haven't been reaching for it too often, so I'm definitely going to bring this back out and use it again. Maybe even depot it and throw it in a project or something, but I do really enjoy that bronzer. Another great thing to pick up whenever The Balm does their sales. I have two palettes here from CoverGirl, and I'm only going to keep one. I like the peach one a lot better just because the blush looks nice, and that bronzer is just a better tone let's put it down here that bronzer is just a better tone for me so i'm gonna hold on to this one and i'm gonna declutter the chocolate one because these highlights were just way too glittery on me and that bronzer it was just a bit dark i really wanted to try out the makeup geek so i have two bronzers from them i have the shade tawny and the shade sunkissed sunkissed is way too light on me like you can barely see this at all so i need to declutter this one because i can't use it as a bronzer but the shade tawny is actually a good shade for me and i do like it so i'm gonna hold on to tawny this is the wet and wild color icon bronzer i have the shade queensland i think it's part of one of their limited edition whatever collections it's not the perfect bronzer because i feel like it takes so much effort to blend this out when i have other bronzers i don't really need to do that with but I do want to give it more of a chance, test it out with a few of the different brushes and different powders. So I'm going to hold on to this one for just a little bit longer. A bronzer that I need to just go ahead and get rid of is from ColourPop. This is in, yeah, I can't even tell because I have to pop up the pan to tell you. But this, I never reach for it. And when I do reach for it, I'm never satisfied with how it looks. So this one is going to get decluttered. This was actually the first bronzer I ever bought. <laughs> this is the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzer. And it's getting a little old at this point, but it's still a good bronzer and I need to reach for it more often. I feel like it's really good for my skin tone. It blends out really nicely. So I need to bring this back out from the back of my drawers and use it again. Last but not least, we have the Smashbox Ablaze palette and this is going nowhere. I love this so much. It's just the perfect combination of bronzers and highlights and nice peachy blushes. I love me a good peach blush. So this is... This is never going anywhere, ever. <laughs> oh, that looks so much better. I like that a lot. Okay, guys, so no judgment. This drawer is a, um, a mess, which is why we're decluttering. So these are all, like, literally, this is just highlighters. <laughs> this is just highlighters and some face palettes. That's okay. We just got to jump in. Let's jump in. I have some cover effects little mini highlighting drops that I never reach for. Those can go. Let me just pick out what I know right off the bat like I can just get rid of. This is a ColourPop Super Shock Cheek and Wisp. I just don't like this. It's kind of a pain in the butt to put on. This is a Milani highlighter in Strobe Light Afterglow Highlight. I don't reach for it. Like it's it's a nice highlight, but I I have a drawer full of highlighters that I need to go through. So this one's going to go. I don't reach for loose highlighters and it took me a while to realize this so I'm gonna get rid of the Kylie loose highlighter in lightning bolt and the wet n wild loose highlight in moon tears so I think I just got one of the hourglass palettes that has this highlighter in it this is incandescent strobe light so I don't I really don't need a mini when I have two full hourglass palettes so I'm gonna declutter this one and then let's just run through the highlighters that I'm going to keep up here real quick. This is the e.l.f. Dollar Highlighter in White Pearl. This is the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. Love that. This is another e.l.f. Highlighter. This is their Baked Highlight in Moonlight Pearls. This is the MAC Limited Edition Highlight that they brought back. This is in Whisper of Guilt. This was definitely like a FOMO YouTube made me buy it thing, but it's a beautiful highlight. And... I really like it. This is a Makeup Geek highlighter in the shade Moonlight. This is my loved Fenty highlight in Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. This is the ever, ever favorite and famous Becca Royal Glow highlighter that I love. I'm never gonna get rid of that ever. This is actually like a little brush cleaner that I can move. <laughs> this is the Too Faced, the original like Diamond Fire highlight. And I remember how badly I wanted this and how I lusted after it and now like I don't even touch it. 
I feel like this should be on display on my vanity instead of in here. So let me put it up there. And then if I still don't reach for it, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm actually thinking about decluttering it. How? Right? Like, oh. First things first, this is one of the new Hourglass palettes. This is the Ambient Lighting Edit 4. I just did a full video comparing the two new Hourglass palettes. Definitely going to hold on to this one. I have four ABH glow kits that I'm going to be holding on to. I have the Moon Kit, Moon Kit. I have the Glow Kit in Moonchild. I have the Glow Kit in Sun Dipped. I have the Dream Glow Kit. Look how pretty that is. Oh. I love using these actually on my eyes more so than as highlighters. And then I have the Sugar Glow Kit with my favorite Starburst shade right there. I also have the new Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Palette, and I really like this palette. It is beautiful. Like, I'm definitely glad that I picked this up. And I would recommend, if you're interested in getting a nice palette from Wet n Wild, these are all everyday good highlight shades that you'll get a lot of use out of. I also have the Too Faced Natural Face Palette. This is another face palette that I absolutely love. Let's not blind you guys. Let's do this. This is another face palette that I love. I, I need to clean it up a little bit. But I love the highlights in here. That pink blush is just oh, stunning. The bronzers can be a little mm, depending on how I apply them, but I do love this palette and the packaging is just gorgeous as well. A part of me keeps wondering why I bought this because I never cream highlight or contour. <laughs> I felt like I saw this at uh, TJ Maxx. It was really affordable. And I know I love ABH, so that's probably why I picked it up. But I never, like, I've just swatched these. I've never actually used them. You know, I'll hold on to it for a little bit longer because I did just get it not too long ago. And maybe I'll try to challenge myself in the next couple of months to do more cream contouring and highlighting. But if this is still here and not used during the next declutter, it's going to have to go. Okay, time to go through the Becca highlighters. So, let's see. For the full-sized ones... I have Moonstone. Moonstone is actually really pretty, so I'm gonna hold on to this one. I'm gonna try to get these to fit in here. I have Prosecco Pop. This one I got in a boxy charm, and it's I think it's just too dark for me. I'm not using it. That one can go. Let's see. This mini is in Vanilla Quartz. This is a nice light shade. I think that'd be nice in the winter. Ah. We're gonna hold on to you. This mini is in Opal. Yeah, I don't think I need it. It's too dark. Let's see, there was one of these that I knew that I really didn't need. Oh, this is beautiful. Topaz Flashes Gilt. It's a little bit green. I'll keep you. Pearl Flashes Gold. That one's really pretty. These are all like duochrome kind of highlighters. This one is Opal Flashes Jade. How do I open you? That one's really unique and pretty, but I don't know if I would have used it like as a face highlight. And then this one is Champagne Dream Flashes Bellini. I love this one. This one's gorgeous. Okay. I think I'm going to keep all four. <laughs> oh, we're doing better already. Look how nice. Okay. So this last little section back here. I can definitely get rid of this Ofra highlight in Rodeo Drive. Again, I got it in a boxy charm, but I, I never touch it or reach for it or think about it. So, boop. This is a loose highlight from Geek Chic Cosmetics. This is in Moon Tiara Stardust, and it's gorgeous. You can also use it as like an eye glitter or anything, so I'm, I'm going to hold on to this. Just move it up here. I have a big highlighter from Kylie Cosmetics. It's the um, highlighter in Vanilla, French Vanilla. It's actually a really pretty shade, and I don't have anything else like that exact shade in my collection, so I'm going to hold on to this one. I don't like the packaging, though. This is bulky. This is... It's like a cigarette carton, but we'll put it on the side. I also have her highlighter palette over here from the Weather Collection, and I actually really like this palette too, so that's going to stay here. And I have two gigantic Jeffree Star highlighters. I have the Skin Frost in Summer Snow Cone. These things are literally gigantic. Like, that's my hand. That's how it's huge. Summer Snow Cone. And then I have the Skin Frost in Ice Cold. And I don't reach for these that often. I need to pull one out for my November Everyday Makeup Basket. I think I'm going to bring out Ice Cold. So I'll probably just keep that because I'm going to do my monthly makeup basket as soon as I'm done with this declutter. So I think I'm just going to put that up there. And where are you going to go? What if I put you right there? No. I want you to 
fit somewhere. Why are highlighters always so weird? Oh, Ooh, I think I did it. Yes. So this can actually get moved to another drawer. And then I can use this whole backspace for just the palette. So contouring palette, highlight palette, highlight, highlight palette, highlight palette, highlight palette, face palette. And then I also still have the Kat Von D Shade and Light Contour Palette. I'm no longer purchasing from the brand, but I am going to try and pan this next year. I'm thinking of doing, along with my Pan That Palette, another year-long project pan where I try to pan some other things. And this is going to be one of the things that I'm going to try and pan. I did replace, there used to be like a darker, more orangey shade down here. You can buy all of these individually. So a few months ago, I bought another of this that light color right here, and I replaced it over here because I know I would use that more. So I have like a yellow two of the lights, and then all of the original contour shades in here. Oh my god, this drawer looks so much neater. This, oh, I love this. Okay, so. These last two drawers down here are actually all of my eyeshadow palettes, and I've already decluttered those. So if you missed that video, make sure you check that one out. Okay guys, so moving up to on top of the Alex 5 drawers, I actually just decluttered these first like three drawers only to find out that all the footage was just like, you couldn't see anything. <laughs> so I didn't want to like put everything back and like refilm it. So I'm going to just show you what I decluttered from each drawer. Um, the first drawer right up here, I just had two setting sprays, the Milani and the Peach Mist from Too Faced. I kept both of those, didn't really need to get rid of them, but I did declutter the Milani Make It Dewy because I I can't get this to work. I don't like the way it looks, I don't like the way it sprays, it's just a pain in the butt. This next drawer right here used to be full of lip liners and scrubs that I never touched. So these are the only ones that I kept. I kept six, two from Urban Decay, one from Catrice, one from Kylie, one from Marc Jacobs, and then a Jordana lip pencil. No, that's Milani. Yeah, that's a Milani mint lip pencil, my bad. And then the one lip scrub that I'm keeping is from e.l.f. and it's like their rose lip scrub. So that's all that I'm keeping from there. I decluttered two full-size e.l.f. lip scrubs just because one got really, really messy and like melted all over the place and the other one I just am not reaching for. So those needed to go. These are all the lip liners that I decluttered. It's kind of a pain in the butt to go through all of them again, but essentially every ColourPop lip liner I had, I got rid of it because I cannot stand the way that they break down. They like fall out of their container and they just get so messy. So all the ColourPop ones went. I have one from a BoxyCharm that I really didn't like. This one is from Lipstick Queen. Pretty sure I also got that in a box. I have some NYX lip liners in here in colors that I just really don't reach for like ever. I've got one e.l.f. lip liner that I just didn't really like. Uh, and then these are just more colors that I don't use. One from the Ulta line and then one from, is that, this is Jordana? Yeah, and then one from Jordana because I just never reach for lip pencils. Ever. <laughs> The next drawer down I have are all of my primers, and honestly, I do a pretty good job of keeping that curated. So the only primer that I got rid of was the Spotlight Primer from Physicians Formula, because I just did not like the way that this sat and felt on my skin. I forgot one last lip scrub I got rid of in the lip drawer. This is the Milani Keep It Secret scrub, or Keep It Sweet scrub, excuse me. I just don't like having to like dip my fingers in for a scrub. I just I feel like it's messy. Uh, yeah, not a huge fan, so that one's getting decluttered. The next drawer down are all of my lashes, and for someone who doesn't wear lashes every day, I felt like I had a lot of them. <laughs> so I did declutter a bunch, and I just kept a couple of pair of Allure lashes and some from Sephora. I got rid of a bunch of, like, Ardell's that I just wore down to the ground. These are Double Wispies, Demi Wispies. This is a pair of 811s that I wore a few times. These are, I think, the magnetic ones that I just, oh God, I hated. I hated their magnetic lashes so much. And then this was just uh, like an obnoxious packaged pair of lashes. Like, why do I need all this box? Why? I don't. This is this is ridiculous. Um, yeah, but I think I got these in a boxy charm or something. Never reach for them. This next drawer down, the last one that I decluttered during that off-camera session, has all of like my single, individually packaged 
shadows and mascara so I did keep a couple I narrowed down my super shock collection to three so there's only three super shocks in here these top two are loose eyeshadows from ColourPop these are all from Geek Chic Cosmetics I love those and I have a few mascaras in here one from YSL one from Wet n Wild my Chantecaille mascara and another Wet n Wild over here on the end two mascaras I did end up decluttering are both from Clinique I don't like any Clinique mascaras that I've tried and their brushes always irritate my eyes. I don't know what it is about Clinique brushes and my eyes. I just can't do it. So those are both getting decluttered. I also decluttered one of the Laura Mercier shadow sticks. This is in Au Naturel, I think. And I don't really use this that often. I think it would make a nice eyeshadow primer, like if you use it like that, but I don't really need it. It's a little sample thingy, so that can go. This is an eyeshadow, or not eyeshadow, this is an eyelash primer from Lancome. I just never really reach for eyelash primers. I just, I don't feel like there's a need for those, um, so I just don't need this. And then real quick, we'll just go through all of the ColourPop Super Shocks that I decluttered. This is the Super Shock in Hanky Panky. This is the shade Issa, which is like a dark purpley color. These are the shades Whittle and Dare. This is one of their limited edition birthday cake shades. And then this is a shade from their My Little Pony collection. And this is the shade Going Rogue. Okay, so now that we're caught up, we're gonna go to this next drawer, which is a bit of a hot mess. These are all brow products and eyeliners. Okay, so since there's so many like little pencils and stuff in here, I think the best way to do this is just to dump the whole thing out and just start rearranging it back in the drawer. Okay, so this is a brow palette from the Brow Gal, and I actually really like this dark brown powder right here. It works really well in my brows. I don't use the other two shades, so it'd probably be best if I depotted it, but this is a good product. I got it in a um, BoxyCharm a long time ago, so I'm going to hold on to this. I have two of the Ulta brow tints, one in medium and one in deep. Deep definitely works better for me, but this is back when I first tried it out, so I'm going to keep the deep shade and I'm going to declutter the medium shade. This is a tinted brow gel from that same company, the Brow Gal, but this brown, it's called brown number two. It's way too light for me. It is a very, very light brown, so I just need to declutter this one. So these are three liners from Wet n Wild. This one is a pencil liner. I actually haven't even opened it up yet. And then these are the two liquid liners. I used the skinny tip one in my full face of Wet n Wild, and I thought it was okay. But since these are all fairly brand new, I'm going to hold on to these. I honestly don't even remember how I got this. This is like a pencil purple liner from Lancome. I rarely ever use purple, so I don't need that. Oh, and it's glittery. Oh, oh Jesus, no. This is a retractable brow pencil from Wet n Wild. I've had this for a little bit and I've tried it. I, I really don't like the product. It's way too hard and waxy and I feel like I'm ripping out like my brow hairs whenever I'm using it. So that needs to go. I have a couple of products from NYX here and I'm, I'm going to hold on to all of them. So I have two of their faux white eyeliners, one in like a yellowy color and one in a more pinky color. And then I have their jumbo eye pencil in black. So I'm going to hold on to those. This is an unopened eye pencil from Ulta, and I think I have an opened one over here. Yeah, so I have one opened. I'll just hold on to the one that's open, and I'll declutter the one that's not open. Someone else can use that. This is a brow pencil from e.l.f., and honestly, it's just... I don't know. It doesn't work for me. Uh, it's too hard, and it doesn't blend out that well in my brows. It looks really harsh, so that one's gonna go... I don't know if you could tell, I have a lot of like affordable brow pencils because I was trying to find something that I liked and I definitely found out that I, I like pomades a hell of a lot better than I do pencils just to begin with. Speaking of which, these are two color pop brow pencils. One's just called the Brow Pencil and one's called the Brow Boss. I actually hated the Brow Boss because it does this. Like it, uh, ugh, the packaging sucks and it's a pain in the butt just to try and get it open. And this one, the packaging is definitely a lot better, but this product the actual like method that it pops up is also a pain in the butt and I don't like the product. I just, oh, I just feel like they did kind of miss the mark on their brow products for me. Speaking of which, these are three ColourPop gel liners, two, three, and I don't like any of them. They don't even last in my waterline until like I'm done with my makeup. Like they're gone within 10 minutes. So I have it in black, I have it in nude, and then I have it in like this kind of bronzy color and I 
I never like my look when I use any of these, so these need to go. Oh, this is actually a nice um, gel eyeliner. This is from Bella Pierre. I think I got this in a box somewhere, but it's just a black gel liner that actually stays in your waterline, so that's gonna stay. Along with the Marc Jacobs, I actually really like the black in this collection. It's, I think it's called Blacker. This is a uh, just a twist up one, which is really nice. I don't have to worry about sharpening anything. But that one's really good. I'm gonna hold on to that. And speaking of Marc Jacobs, I also have another, what's it called? <laughs> I also have another, whatever it's called. I can't find the name on here. But it's another eyeliner, but this one's more of like a shimmery kind of nude color that looks really nice in the waterline. So holding on to that as well. This is an eyeliner from Jaunt Blue, but this is like a gray color. It's not actually black, so I, I don't reach for it like ever. I have an Urban Decay 24-7 Glide on eye pencil. I got the like Perversion eye kit that came with the mascara and the uh, eyeliner. And actually, it's a really nice gel eyeliner. It's like a mini. Um, so I am going to hold on to this. Another um, pencil that's actually really nice is from Lancome. This is the Drama Liquid Pencil Intense Long Wear Noir. So it's just a nice lasting black liner. I don't think Beats a really good black gel liner. Like you need at least one of those in your collection and I have multiple. <laughs> this is from Vintage Cosmetics. Uh, this is just a smoky black eye pencil and I actually like it. It's a little bit messy because you do have to sharpen it and I feel like it doesn't sharpen too well but as a product it's actually really nice. It stays in my waterline. It doesn't budge. It doesn't leak or anything so I'm gonna hold on to that too. These are two liquid liners that I really like. This is the Stila Stay All Day in Just Black. And then this is a MAC Liquid Last Liner in Brown. And my best friend actually picked this out for me when we were doing one of our hauls. And I have to like re-remember how much I like brown liner. Like liquid liner. I got one of the NYX Epic Ink liners in brown. And I've been using that almost daily. Like I forgot how nice a... Uh, a nice soft brown liner can look and I really do like this one from MAC so those are both gonna stay okay so I'm gonna be honest I really don't like this clear brow gel from elf I hated the brush so I tried like taking out the stopper and using a different brush in it but the stopper is only as big as this brush so I can't put in any other brushes it's uh, it's a mess but I don't want to get rid of it because I am planning on doing an affordable clear brow gel video so I do want to hold on to this just so I can have it around for that video but it's not a great product <sighs> this is a Stila waterproof brow color I feel like it's really light I used it a lot when I first got it yeah that's really really light um I have not reached for it since I first got it I think I got this like in February so I'm gonna get rid of that Okay, and then next we have the It Cosmetics Brow Power. I think I got this also in a boxy charm. I feel like this is also, again, a bit light. But, oh, oh, this hurts. This hurts trying to actually, like, put on. <laughs> so that decided it right there. I'm not going to hold on to that. Okay, moving on to our liners and our pomades. So, first off, Natasha Denona a Star Liner. I am holding on to this. I don't actually like the glitter side. I feel like it doesn't adhere that nicely but this side is a nice black liner I'm gonna hold on to that this elf gel liner is just so dry I used to use it in my brows but I feel like it dried out way too fast and it's just uh, not that great so that's gonna go this is actually one of the brow products Kat Von D came out with in Scarlet which is a red I really just wanted something to do a nice red liner with which is what I've been using it for but honestly I don't use it for much else other than that so I'll hold on to it and see how often I do use it or reach for it in the future. This looks like it totally dried out. <laughs> this is a gel eyeliner from Pretty Vulgar and this is the Blacklist number one. I don't know if you can actually see in the bottle, but it just it looks like a hunk of dried liner and I never use it, so that one's gonna go. This is a yellow liner from Kylie Cosmetics. It's actually a really nice gel liner, very pigmented and smooth. So I'm gonna hold on to this one. Next, I have the ABH Dip Brow in dark brown. And I definitely realize that I like how my brows look with the black instead of this brown, but I did use a lot of it. You can see there's a lot of wear right there. But I don't know why I'm holding on to it when I don't use this one. I use the black one, so I, I need to get rid of it. And last but not least, I have a 
very dried out NYX gel liner and this is just in epic black. It's like their mousse liner and this also dried out really fast even though I kept it closed. So that one is going to go as well. It's a little bit hard to hold it up and show you guys but this is what the drawer looks like now. A lot more organized and just overall better. And that's everything that we decluttered from the drawer. Next we have my concealer drawers. I want to do the same thing, just kind of throw them all out and just go through them one by one. I really like these LA Girl concealers. I have one in like a salmon corrector and then just one for under my eyes. I think this is in the shade Natural. Yeah, the shade Natural works best for me, so I am going to hold on to those. I really just didn't like this. This is the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Concealer, and I thought since I loved the foundation so much that I should try the concealer out. It's nothing like the foundation, and the shades don't look nice, and it creases so bad, so these are going to go. I really don't like how this NYX concealer looks on me. I, I keep trying and trying and it just, it never looks good and I, just, I need to get rid of it. These are two minis I have of the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I got them from like the mini section at Sephora and I really do like them, though I do have to mix them together to get a nice shade match, but I do like both of these a lot. I'm gonna hold on to them. Not only is this old, it's not that great. This is a Maybelline Fit Me Concealer and it, it's just old, that needs to go. This is another concealer that I never reach for. This is the Physician's Formula Insta Ready Full Coverage Concealer. It is super full coverage, like one of the most full coverage concealers from the drugstore, but I don't reach for it ever. I feel like if anything, it can look a little cakey if you're not careful. And I just have other affordable concealers that I like better, so that one's gonna get decluttered. These are not going anywhere. My favorite Kylie concealer. These two shades are ivory and stone. I have a third one that's currently the shade Bone, and it's actually in one of my new Project Pan projects, my Finish Six by Solstice. So that's in that drawer right over here. But those are not going anywhere. This concealer from e.l.f. is really good for spot concealing. I don't really like it under my eyes. Can it can look a little dry and creepy 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 <laughs> but for spot concealing it's super full coverage and works really well so i'm gonna hold on to this one another concealer not going anywhere is my chantecaille le camouflage stylo anti-fatigue corrector pen this is a really nice um like lightweight sheer but still got a little bit of coverage and brightness to it concealer and i like using this on minimal makeup days so that's gonna stay this is from wet n wild and i thought it could maybe be a dupe for that concealer from Chantecaille um but this is actually really dark on me like I can't actually use any of these wet and wild concealers under my eye because they're so dark which is really unfortunate so I think I'm gonna hold on to this and try using it in other ways um but for these two I have to get rid of the darker one so medium I bought medium tawny and light medium beige medium tawny is way too dark so I need to declutter that one I'll keep light medium beige but even this is like the shade of my actual skin it's not a good under eye concealer so i'll have to mix it with something to make it work but i'm going to give it the benefit the benefit of the doubt and actually try using it so that is our concealer drawer now a lot more organized and these are all the concealers we decluttered okay and the last but certainly not least drawer in the acrylic set are all of my glitters and i know for a fact that half of these can go half of them can go let's get started First things first, all of the liquid shadows from Wet n Wild's Got the Graphic Collection are going. They are going by forever. They're terrible. I hated all of these so much. I'm like running out of space to put decluttered things. Jesus. Okay. Along that same vein, I have here some like liquid liners, glitters from Wet n Wild and from e.l.f. I don't like any of these. Like, they're not pigmented. They don't show up great. Oh, those are going. The only liner from e.l.f. that I actually like is this one, and it's because it's a really pretty inner corner highlight, even though like it doesn't have to be like the most pigmented thing, because it's kind of like a clear iridescent shade. So this looks really pretty on the inner corner, so I'm going to hold on to just that one. This is something I never use. I got this in a BoxyCharm. This is a Cover FX Shimmer Veil. Yeah, I'm not reaching for that at all. That might have been brand new. <laughs> That's gonna go. Moving on to Kylie. These two shades were horrible from her Liquid Shadow collection. This is from the Weather collection. I hated these two so much. They're gonna go with the purple and like the orangey one. 
The two shades from Kylie's collection that are actually decent are like this kind of shimmery champagne shade and like this brown shade. They're still not amazing, but I can actually make them work. Okay, these are two heavy metal eyeliners from Urban Decay, and I love these. I, I want to get more of these because I love them so much, so those are definitely staying. This e.l.f. liquid shadow is old, and it doesn't work that well. It creases like nothing else, so that's gonna go. So I have some of the Supernova shadows from ColourPop, and honestly, I'm not really impressed by them. The only one that I was excited for was this green one, and it's so patchy. So patchy. And they don't last that well, so you know what? All three of these are gonna go. <laughs> We are being harsh. We are getting rid of all of this. <laughs> the only things that I'm going to keep like everything of, I have a bunch of Stila Glitter Inglows that I adore. So I have one of like their little mini sets that came out last Christmas. It was like the Written in the Stars set. So I have those. I have full sizes in Rose Gold Retro. This is Molten Midnight Gold Goddess. Also have Patina right over here, uh, La Douce, which is like this green one, and then Inner Ferenz, which is like this red one that's really pretty. And this is our new narrowed down glitter drawer. I, I definitely needed to clean this one out. I don't know why I was holding on to all those bad glitters for so long, but we did it, and this is all that I'm keeping. Okay, so since I literally have so many lipsticks, I feel like this is the one part of the video I'm just gonna have to like separate out and speed up because otherwise we'll probably be here for a couple hours. I'm gonna save this one for last. These are all my lip glosses and they just stay in this little separate container right there. So I'll do that at the end, but we're just gonna go through all of this. So this is where we are at so far. Everything over here is reorganized and I'm keeping. And all the lip products over here are what I'm decluttering. I have a lot of like the ColourPop Ultra Mattes. I have some MAC lipsticks in here. A lot of the Wet n Wild. The Kylie lipsticks that I don't like. And then there's a lot of random colors that I feel like I have 
too many of them in my collection to justify keeping them. Like this one's an actual duplicate. I have two of these. I don't need both of them, you know, things like that. So let's jump into glosses. So these are my glosses. I did run into a couple of glosses around here and I try to just throw them all in here. So right off the bat, I know I am definitely keeping both my Alyssa Ashley and Elf collab gloss as well as the Fenty Beauty. This is the original gloss bomb. I'm not a huge fan of this Kylie gloss. It's like a weird pinky purpley and I don't like that applicator at all. So that's going to go. This one I haven't even opened, but I think I'm just going to toss it. This is the Juice Infused Lip Oil from Ulta. This is a lip gloss from the Sephora line. This is the Gel Gloss Ultra Brilliant. And uh, I feel like it's just a little bit too goopy for me. So that's gonna boop. I really like this. I feel like it's expensive for what it is. Uh, it's the YSL, um, what is it? Uh, essentially it's like their lip. It's basically a lip gloss, but it's a light pink. It feels really nice on my lips, but would I ever rebuy this? No, I bought this for my almost full face of YSL video. Of course, I love my Marc Jacobs Mini, and this is in Cream and Sugar. Love that. This is a lip gloss from ColourPop. This is in Fairy Floss. I feel like this is a really nice shade. It's like just a regular nude gloss, and you can't really go wrong with a good nude gloss. This is another ColourPop gloss. This is the Ultra Glossy Lip. It's the Shayla collab. And this one... Yeah, it's just ultra glossy. I feel like they do glosses really well, ColourPop. I just recently have not been a fan of their um, ultra matte formulas. This plumping gloss from e.l.f. is like the worst thing. It makes my lips feel horrendous, so that's gonna buy. This MUA gloss, I remember like, I think someone mentioned this gloss in a video and I just couldn't find it anywhere and then I finally found it and then I never opened it. So I'm gonna open this and then actually try it. Oh, that's a lot different than I thought it was going to be. It's actually like really pigmented. Okay, but I'm going to give it a shot since it is brand new. And then I have two NYX butter glosses, uh, just a nude and a red. I'm going to keep the nude because I do like it, but I never, whenever I go for a red lip, I'm not going for a glossy red lip. I always go for like a liquid lip. So that's going to go and we're going to hold on to this one. And with that, this is our final tally of decluttered lipsticks. I feel like this took way too long. <laughs> and here we are. This is the final look of all the makeup that we've decluttered today. It's a lot. <laughs> That's probably like 30% of my collection, if not more. Probably almost half. So thank you guys so much for watching. I can't believe this decluttered took so long. But it needed to be done and now my makeup is just so much more organized and cohesive and streamlined. Thank you guys so much for sitting through this whole video. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye!